The Institute for Achievement and Learning is here to help students academically during their time at Lynn. Located within the Green Center, the Institute is here for those who seek academic support. The Institute for Achievement and Learning is an academic support program designed to help students with documented learning disabilities. So here at Lynn, we support students in a variety of ways uh, in, the, in the form of coaching, tutoring, and uh, accommodations, for example, extended time on examinations. One of the services the Institute offers is tutoring for any subject the student needs help in. Um, at, at Lynn, we offer a variety of tutoring in the, um, for, with regards to our subjects. Uh, we actually can help our students with any subject here at Lynn, from graphic design to education, communication, sports management, um, business as well. So we can provide students all the support they need here at Lynn. I'd say the Institute helped me academically by giving me the right resources for me to succeed in my classes, such as giving me my tutor or just giving me my coaches. And they really helped me a lot to stay organized and they helped me to, um, to strive in my classes and they really want me to do well. They got me good grades. They've helped me with my essays that I've learned over the years that has helped me, let's see, learn how to write essays better that's one reason why, and they also do one-on-one -on -one sessions with me that help me a lot, and that stuff, so yeah. In addition to the tutoring, students also have the benefit of taking their exams in the testing center, located on the second floor of the institute. So what the testing center initially does is, to, is a, provide an alternative testing environment for our students in our program that are eligible under ADA law. So once the student provides the documentation to us, um, they're able to give that documentation to the professors, uh, which entitles them to use the program. They can come here under, un or basically under double time conditions. So if the class meets for an hour, they can come here for two hours and take the exam. It benefits me by just giving, getting me that sense of like support and that there's like people around you that like really care about you and they want you to succeed very well, which is something I truly personally never really got in high school, but which is very like gratifying and it's really Really cool. Well, I get to go in peace and quiet, and I'm not surrounded by people like pressuring me, like in normal classrooms. Mm -hmm. Aside from the tutoring and testing centers, students can also receive help on their writing assignments from the writing center, and can also get advice on improving their writing skills. Paula Hyman is the writing center's coordinator. And I've been working with the institute for 18 years and for the last five years I've been coordinator of the Writing Center for the Institute for Achievement and Learning. And my role is to make sure, first of all, that the, the Writing Center is staffed and we have one tutor, and they're a writing tutor, so they have their one tutor come in every hour to make sure that there are people here for students who walk in. Now, the Writing Center is generally a walk-in only. We do not make appointments. We have done that in the past, but we found that it was a little more open and um, to more people if they did not have appointments. So um, now it's a walk-in only. They've helped me academically by building my skills as a writer They've helped me uh, with all my uh, grammar and my story plot and they helped me with my resources a lot just to make sure that like I get the right like sources in just that I get the right information in my page, my paper so I can have a um, better grade on the paper. They helped me with my essays. That's very important in college. So they review it, they check it, they double check it, triple check it to make sure that it all makes sense for the professor. I've learned how to not write, repeat myself in essays over and over again. They've taught me how to not do that anymore. Lastly, there are the academic coaches who help students find ways to deal with their academics. Well, as an academic coach, I work one-on-one -on -one with students on whatever goal that they come in with. But the things we work on primarily are prioritizing, on um, executive functioning skills, time management, organization, and transition to college. What she's done is she, she's really 
uh, gotten on me just to make sure that I'm getting all my stuff turned in and all my assignments. And she is always making sure that uh, I know what's due that week and just that like I stay organized. That's the main thing she was, she always would tell me is to stay organized. So that's one thing that I personally like growing in a lot because I never really was organized until like I met my coach. To be very organized, to be on time, <laughs> to be like to get essays done on time, do it ahead of time, like two weeks ahead of time. That's how I do it, and basically be organized. <laughs> The Institute for Achievement and Learning is here to help students with its different services both for when students visit and when students need help for when they do homework outside of their classes. For iPulse, this is Brian Martin signing off. On August 9, 2014, tragedy struck in Ferguson, Missouri when Michael Brown, a black American teen, was shot and killed by police officer Darren Wilson, a white man. The controversy from this incident resulted from the fact that Wilson was white and Brown was black, leading to protests over racial injustice towards the black community in Ferguson. Wilson faced trial for killing Brown and was acquitted of all charges. He resigned from the police shortly thereafter, citing safety concerns for those around him. The aftermath was protests in Ferguson in 2014 after Wilson's not guilty verdict and again in 2015 on the anniversary of Brown's death. Saturday night. 2015's riots involved both gunfights and physical altercations between protesters and police, with St. Louis County eventually declaring a state of emergency. Police did their very best to keep the peace, but found it almost nearly impossible as protesters continued to create chaos on the streets of Ferguson. But Ferguson is not the first city to protest racial injustice. In recent years, protests have erupted in cities across the U.S. over police brutality and racial injustice, which, like Ferguson, were results from deaths in the black community. The divide, if what Ferguson showed, seems to be getting wider and will not close anytime soon. Only time will tell if the wounds of division will be healed. This is Brian Martin, reporting for Apples, signing off. In late 2014, in Ferguson, Missouri, Black American teen Michael Brown was shot and killed by police officer Darren Wilson, a white man. Wilson was charged for Brown's murder, but was ultimately acquitted of all charges. This led to protests in Ferguson over police brutality towards the black community in both 2014 and again in 2015. Only time will tell if the wounds of division will be healed and peace can again be restored. This is Brian Martin, reporting for iPulse, signing off. A few weeks ago, Puerto Rico suffered a catastrophic disaster when Hurricane Maria touched down and ravaged the nation. Citizens have since been trying to make do and get their lives back on track. President Donald Trump and his administration arrived in Puerto Rico to help the nation get back on its feet. However, Trump's comments about the federal budget sparked outrage. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack because we've spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico, and that's fine. We've saved a lot of lives. Despite this comment, Trump was still adamant about helping Puerto Rico recover. Get the, uh, every death is a horror. Not only were Trump's comments criticized, but his visit received criticism from U.S. government officials, the Puerto Rican mayor, and Puerto Rico itself. People are suffering so greatly when there is such pain and anguish and fear about what the future presents to millions of American citizens on that island that he would act with such folly. This terrible and abominable uh, view of him throwing paper towels and throwing provisions at people, it's really, it, it does not embody the spirit of the American nation. So it was a mixed bag. Some people um, agreed that, you know, we needed, it needed to be a joint effort between Puerto Ricans and the federal government. With complaints of U.S. aid needing to do more, only time will tell if the U.S. and Trump can do more for the Puerto Rican people. This is Brian Martin reporting for iPulse, signing off.
Florida is known for its vibrancy and its many attractions such as parks, beaches, and resorts. Deerfield Beach is one of the many destinations one can visit in the Sunshine State. Discovered in Florida during the late 19th to early 20th century by early settlers and earning its name for being a home territory for deer, Deerfield has evolved into a premier destination in Florida. Well, Deerfield is like no other beach. You have the rocks a little bit south of here, which kind of make the Hillsborough Cove. Um, you have all these restaurants. You have two different hotels. You have the Wyndham and the Embassy Suites. And then you have some boutique hotels along the way. And you have great bars and restaurants. You have Rattlesnake Jake's and you have Sushi Song. You have Brews Room, Burger Fi. And um, you just want to live here because you can go right there to the ocean and see that in the morning. Deerfield Beach is a premier vacation destination with numerous places and activities to undertake. It also has a relaxing atmosphere. Honestly, given the fact that this is the first time I'm here, um, it's quite nice, actually. Um, a very relaxed life, basically. Because, I mean, it's just a good environment. You have the beach right around the corner, and it's, it's like everybody's nice to each other. At Deerfield, there are many things to do and places to explore, such as the beach where one can also play volleyball. The pier is very nice because you can see all the fish from far. I like it because you can always depend on the ocean. You can always can, can depend on the waves crashing onto the shore. And it's just, you know, it's consistent. Oh, well, it's different than Miami. It's a different vibe, different feel, and, um, I don't think that there is one beach around here that is like over here. Um, if you look around, you have, all, you have all this life, and no matter what time you come out to the beach, it's just a beautiful experience, whether you're on the pier or you're just walking the sand. Deerfield Beach is a premier destination in Florida for its calm atmosphere and the many things both residents and tourists can do. This is Brian Martin, reporting for Eyeballs, signing off. Here at Lynn's Purple Residence Hall, students can enjoy living in an apartment-like environment while living on campus. In particular, the single dorms are what students look forward to the most. In the single suites, students who live here benefit from having a lounge area, a kitchenette, a bedroom, and a bathroom all in one space. The lounge is the perfect place for students to relax after a hard day's work. They can hang out on the comfortable couch and maybe watch TV. The kitchenette functions almost like a real kitchen, with a refrigerator for storing food and drinks, a sink to wash dishes, and cupboards and drawers to store foods and utensils. The bedrooms are the ideal place for students to get sleep after a long day of work. The bedrooms come with a closet for students to store their clothes, and a desk if they wish to be productive. The bed also has drawers located underneath it for storage space, such as for storing clothes. The bathroom provides a clean space for students to get ready in the morning with its nicely polished sink and clean shower space. Students can also store whatever other toiletries they wish to in the sink's cupboard located under the sink. The Purple Residence Hall's single dorms are the perfect place for students to live in thanks to the comfortable living accommodations. For more information, go to lynn.edu. Every day, people use social media to find and read their news, or through news channels. But how much news we consume is actually true? How can we know truth from fiction in this age of online communication? In a survey from earlier this year, 60% of consumers stated they feel that social media sites are partly to blame for the spread of fake news. Another statistic also reported that 52% of consumers felt that online news websites regularly report fake news. So the question is this, how can we know where the truth really is? Luckily, there is the Newsroom Classroom. The Newsroom Classroom is a place where you can learn about the current state of news and how to discern truth from fiction in this age of online propaganda. The program gathers research every week to discuss the latest trends in fake news and how to apply this knowledge every day to avoid falling for fake news. The program is dedicated to helping people become smarter in identifying fake news and help them become more confident in discerning truth from fiction in their everyday lives wherever they consume news. News Room Classroom. Truth is better than fiction. 
For more information on the Newsroom Classroom, click the link below to RSVP for the next available class. Anime and manga are two forms of Japanese entertainment that have managed to secure a worldwide fan base, yet many may not know the history of these media. During this J Term 2017 trip to Japan, I had the chance to interview Professor Mark Ludio, who was born and raised in the country of Japan, in order to ask for his knowledge on anime and manga. Well, anime actually began as a adaptation of the old animation movement, but the Japanese decided to call it just anime as a genre that was kind of unique to their own way of expressing uh, animation, which was peculiarly Japanese. It was unique, it was different, had its own kind of flavor to it. The first anime to debut on TV was Astro Boy during the 1960s, courtesy of Osamu Tezuka, who was considered the pioneer of what anime and manga are today. Manga is also a form of Japanese entertainment that has managed to secure a large following outside of its native country. So manga actually means 10,000 pictures. Man comes from the word uh, 10,000. And ga means uh, bamen or e, which is like pictures. So manga literally is 10,000 tableaus or pictures that would depict a story. Another notable difference that readers immediately notice is that manga is read from right to left, unlike the standard book, which is left to right. All um, you know, literature, uh, classically speaking, was written from right to left and read that way from right to left. In Japan? Yeah. And also from top to bottom. Mm. So you go top to bottom and then each line right to left. While their Western counterparts are generally geared toward younger audiences, manga and anime are able to garner audiences of all ages. It's rather bizarre to go on a train and see grown men, and sometimes women, but especially grown men in their business suits mm -hmm. on their way to work at 7 in the morning or at 7 at night, pulling out their, you know, manga and reading it. Anime and the manga have become very successful because they are able to grow their fan base constantly. This is Brian Martin signing off.